I am using a Firehole Sticks number 718 in size 12 for my hook, but you can use any long shank curved hook like this Daiichi 1270. But whatever hook you're using, place it securely in your vise. Although it's not necessary, I like adding a little weight to this fly. 0.015 lead wire is a great way to do this, and putting it in a bobbin holder really helps winding it on the hook. I like making 10 to 15 wraps on my hook shank. And then pushing it up so the back end is right about in line with the hook point. For thread I like using this Vivas 6 Ot in black, but use whatever medium weight thread you want. Start your thread right in front of the lead wraps. Then tie over the lead, holding it in place and making a thread dam behind the lead. Once it's secure, you can wrap over it a few times and smooth out the bump it created. Then bring your thread back to the rear of the hook. Now we need a bit of dubbing. And I like using this hair's ear dubbing in natural. But you can use a synthetic dubbing like the Senyo's laser dub also if you don't want any of the guard hairs. But whatever dubbing you're using, dub a small noodle onto your thread. And then make a small dubbing ball with your noodle. Now we need some goose biots in brown. Strip off two of the biots and then clip the butts clean. Now rotate one of the biots so they're splaying outward, away from each other. Then align the tips of the biots as close as you can. Hold the tips of them with your left hand and then put them on either side of the hook over the dubbing ball. Make two loose wraps over the biots trying to keep them as straight as possible. Then pull the thread to tighten those wraps while pinching the biots tight to keep them from spinning. If they do spin a little, you can adjust them to get them back into position. Then make a few tight wraps over them to keep them locked in place. Of course, make sure you keep adjusting them if need be. Then wrap up the hook over the biots until you reach just behind the lead bump. And then you can simply break the biots off clean. Now we need a fair amount of silver tinsel. You can use a flat tinsel like I'm using, or oval French tinsel if you wish. This tinsel is double-sided. One side is silver and the other is gold. To get the silver side visible while wrapping, tie it in so the gold side is facing outward. Tie this all the way down to the start of the biot tails. Now we need three to four pieces of peacock curl, and try to select the longer pieces in your bunch for this fly. Once you get your pieces, then try to align the tips as best as possible. Then snip off the fragile tips to square them off and make it easy to tie in. Now tie them in so the tips don't extend past the lead bump, and then back to the tail as well. Then bring your thread forward, past the lead, and back down to just in front of the hook point. You'll see why we position the thread that way in a second. Now start wrapping your peacock curl up the hook shank with tight and touching wraps. Once you reach the thread, the weight of the thread will help condense the hurl pieces and make it a bit bushier, which will add to the taper of this abdomen. Keep wrapping the hurl up the hook shank until you reach about two thirds the way up the hook, and then capture the hurl and cut or break it off. With open spiral wraps, wrap the tinsel up the hook shank until you reach the thread to form a ribbing, and then capture the tinsel and snip off the waist. Now we need some pheasant tail fibers. Now pheasant tails have two sides. One side is webby like this and the other has stiff fibers. We want the more stiff fibers here. Stroke the fibers outward to align the tips and then strip them off at the feather stem. Also clip the squirrelies off of the back of the fibers as well. Then tie the pheasant tail fibers in at the base on top of the hook. Wrap back up the feathers a bit until you reach about a one third mark as we are making a wing case here. You can check the length by pulling the fibers forward and adjust the case length accordingly. Now we need a partridge feather, and try selecting a smaller size one here. To prepare this feather, strip off the fuzzy fibers at the base of the feather. Then turn it around so the curve is upward, and pinch the tip of the feather, then stroke the remaining fibers downward and out of the way. then clip the tip of the feather off to form a small triangle for tie-in. So tie this feather in so the curve of the feather is angling upward and directly on top of the fly, right up to the pheasant tail fibers. We now need some more of whatever dubbing you're choosing to use, but we want a fair amount of it this time, quite a bit more than you use for that small dubbing ball to flare out the biots. Dub this onto your thread fairly thick. You do want a thick thorax on this fly.
Wrap the dubbing noodle onto your fly, trying your best to build an even thorax. And you can add more dubbing if you need. Now this dubbing has a lot of guard hairs, which are sticking up, and if yours does as well, just trim them off the top of the ball like so. Then pull the partridge feather forward and over the dubbing ball. As you can see, a few of the fibers are attached past the hook point. Just strip off any excess fibers off the stem and then tie this in right behind the hook eye. After it is secure, then you can break or clip off the stem. Now pull the pheasant tail fibers up and over the partridge feather to form a wing case. Place your thumb on top of the fibers to flare them out a bit and form a wider wing case. Then tie these in tight with a few wraps over them and make a few wraps in front of them as well. Then clip off the pheasant tail fibers as close as possible and do your best to clean up that section so there's no fibers hanging over the eye of the hook. Once you're happy with the head of the fly, then whip finish your fly and trim off the thread. You can now fan out the wing case a bit by wiggling your thumb on top of it. Also try to position the partridge feather correctly as well. Once you're happy with the look of the fly, then add some head cement on your whip finish and a little over the wing case. Now I like using this UV resin to cement the fly, because it gives a nice glossy finish. If you're using the same, once you cure it, you can add a little more on the wing case if it doesn't look as shiny as you want. Okay, I decided to add a third coat here to really shine up the wing case. Well there we have it, the 20 inch stone fly. So I really like fishing these in the winter when the trout are lethargic. I find that they'll still move for such a large juicy meal like a stonefly nymph. It's flashy enough to get the trout's attention, yet subtle enough to get them to bite it. Well, thanks for watching. If you like this sort of thing, please subscribe and share with all your fish-loving friends. Also, do me a favor and hit that like button. I want to let you know I'm now selling McFly Angler merchandise with my logo on it. Your purchase helps support this channel, so I appreciate you taking a look at them. I'll put a link in the description section of this video. I also wanted to remind you that all the materials used today are in the description section of this video, but you might have to click the show more button to expand the section to view. I also have included links to where you can purchase them online. Also included a discount code for the fly artist as well, as a special thank you for being my subscriber. So please use that as you won't be able to find deals this good anywhere else. I'll see you on the next video. Now you go catch some fish.